All right, hello everybody. Today I'm here in beautiful, sunny South Florida. Southwest Florida, that is. And today we're gonna be looking for arboreal ants, cracking twigs down here in South Florida. There's a lot of pressure from invasive species on the ground, especially good old Solenopsis invicta fire ants. And so a lot of the ants actually live up here in these pine trees in dead branches just like this one. And now let's see if lucky first branch is gonna give us any ants, and it does. Wow. Looks like a Campanotus planatus colony in there. So we're gonna take a look at what is inside this here twig in just a second. Looks like I got another male in there. It looks like no queen though. Although I will hold on to them just in case some of these other branches have any. Let's see if there's any ants in this branch. Which there does not appear to be. Oh, we have ants. There's ant brood in there. Don't know if you can see it, but I don't know if it is planatus or not. If it is not, I will dump the planatus out. If it is, oh, it is not. This is Pseudomyrmex gracilis very large twig ant species living in the end of this here branch just the end of it too this whole branch was hollow so i'm going to go ahead and quote unquote release these planatus but of course being invasive we're not going to be nice about it they're just going to have to figure themselves out so it looks like in that there gracilis colony we were able to collect six individuals but none of them were the queen this is a pretty common occurrence with these arboreal ants. Because of the habitat they live in, these, these branches, um, there's limited space for them to nest in. And so them creating these satellite nests where they have brood and workers stored in alternative locations is exceedingly common. Looks like we just cracked open a nest of Pseudomyrmex ejectus, which is a native twig ant species. These native twig ants are all much, much smaller than the invasive Pseudomyrmex gracilis. But they are still very interesting looking and interesting to watch and find. But this ant here, she'll find her nest with that larva and they will recover just fine. There's some more in that. Oh, we got something interesting here, guys. A small myrmicine could be Xenomyrmex floridanus. I don't believe it is, though it more likely looks like Solenopsis picta. Whoa! That's crazy. Huge Campanotus floridanus colony nesting right next to a Solenopsis invicta. You can probably see the fire ants down here. And they're actually fighting. Um, I don't particularly know what to do in this, this here situation because I'd love to protect the native species, but I feel like I've already kind of doomed them by 
by flipping this log. Florida dentist worker. Multiple Florida dentist workers having very bad times. Not completely one sided, but it's definitely a losing fight for those Florida dentists. There they are. Hopefully they uh, can get away, but I'm gonna get out of here before I start getting obliterated by these fire ants. Damn, Invicta. Crazy that those two are nesting so close to each other and haven't fought until just now. Although maybe they do get into some skirmishes from time to time. Kind of sucks that um, cephalodes are not found here in southwestern Florida. They are only in southeastern Florida. Ooh, nice chrysalis colony. And I see eggs. So there's a really good chance that we've got a queen in this one. Let's see if my theory is correct, shall we? Oh, there's our queen. Oh yeah, look at her. She's missing an antenna, huh? There she is. You can see that slightly larger thorax. You might be able to make out the wing scars. And her gaster is slightly physogastric from laying eggs. All things that are indicative of queens. So even though these semi-claustral twig ant queens can be a little bit difficult to distinguish from the workers, if you know what you're looking for, they do still have all of the signs of a normal queen. And actually, she does have both antennae. I thought she was missing one, but she must have just been... Must have been stuck to her or something, because she is totally fine. Look at that. Jeez, that's a huge Trachy Mermex mound. I was wondering what had been making this. And it's, uh, it's Trachy Mermex. Huge mound. I wonder if this is a polygynous colony. Which, they're not supposed to be polygynous in Florida, but... Who knows what's going on down here in South Florida. All sorts of crazy stuff, I bet. Just flipped this huge log and I found a Fadoli Queen. I think it's just Navigans. So in the end of this stick is a Chromatogaster Queen. Might be a little bit tricky to see her. And she does have a larva with her. They're a, almost a pupa. Way down in there. So it looks like it's just a founding queen. Let me see if I can get her out to get some better pictures of her. There she is. Nice, pretty reddish Chromatogaster. And there's her pre-pupa that she has. It was the only piece of brood that she had, so... Looks like another gracilis colony. Oh, there's... Is it Xenomermax? Or is it Picta again? These guys are too small to identify with the naked eye.
Got some trap giants under this. Killing some termites right now. I think this has to be Ruganotus. Check this out. They're totally grabbing and attacking these termites. In captivity, termites are a great food for trap jaws. And well, this is kind of exactly why. It's a really natural food source for them. Very cool. Oh, we have ants that I don't think are Pseudomermax. Let's hope it's Xenomermax and not Solenopsis picta again, but kind of have a feeling it's picta. Oh, it's Xenomermax! Well, I kind of forgot to record a real outro for this one, so that's about all I have. This will be the last Florida video that I make for the foreseeable future, but there will be tons of cool stuff coming out, so just stay tuned, you know, turn that bell on for notifications, subscribe if you haven't, and yeah, thank you very much for watching.